Yes, I mean it like that. History is useless. But what do I mean with that? And why did I spend so much time of my life studying history in college, if it really has no use? All of that in this video. So stay tuned. Alright then, let's start with what I mean with history. And useless. As you could probably guess, I don't mean the field of study, nor history as a source of entertainment. What I'm talking about is the way it's taught in most, if not all, schools, and how it's understood by popular culture. I'm pretty sure that all of you watching this video right now have had a bad and boring history boring. teacher who was insisting that they had to learn some arbitrary date like when did the Roman Empire fall, when did World War II start. But why? What does that teach us? What use has that knowledge? To be real honest with you, no use at all. Cool, now when you look on a calendar you know, hey, today, 100 years ago, don't know, something happened. Does that really further your understanding of history? No, I don't think so. So basically you have to learn these dates because somebody in some office, probably not being a teacher, had, has decided that you have to. Because it's mostly not even the fault of the teachers. Because they, at least where I live, mostly studied history theory as well. But after years, maybe even decades of teaching the same study plan, you get kind of burned out. And that leads to teachers who really don't care about history. Or at least I know plenty of people who had teachers like that. And I guess you had some teachers like that as well. But sadly, that's exactly the way how you get people thinking that history is boring, that's just a long list of things that happened in the past, and that you have to learn it because of some heritage reason, but nobody explained it to you, so who cares if I know what happened in the past and how it's affecting my life right now. They are all dead anyway, so so why should I care? And that leads to people who do not know the history and will fall for people who tell them what the powerful want you to think that your history is. And then things just happen, like Ukraine always has been part of Russia and has no reason to exist at all. We know that's a bunch of bullshit, but people in Russia seem not to know. I wonder why. Or like this guy who wants you to believe that the Spanish Empire was actually good for the Americas because it brought human rights to America somehow. Yes, that's a real thing a Spanish politician said actually. But if history is not only knowing what happened, what is that history you are telling me all about? And why is it important to teach it that way? Many questions I know. Just wait. I still think I'm getting to a point here. I'm pretty sure all of you already know, but the most important thing in history is context. Which in short is the why things happened and what led to things happening the way they did. And I believe that you will agree with me in that it's more important to know why and how things happened than just to know that it happened. But that would require a bit more of effort to teach than just to list things and letting students spit it out on the test. Also, teachers and the people doing the study plans would really want to teach real history, which I just don't see them wanting to. But also, it's way more useful for all of us if we know what led to what. For example, you, because you are a smart chap, already know that World War II had a reason to start in World War I. Okay, admit. That's an easy example. It's literally in the name, but you get what I mean, don't you? That is what makes context so important. If you only study history by dates and names and things like that, you don't really get use out of it. But how can we get use out of history? I'm really glad you asked. From my point of view, and most if not all historians out there, the importance of history, the thing that makes it important to learn, is the human nature behind history. I didn't came up with that. The first real historian, Thucydides, had that figured out already in the before times. And yes, he was the real first historian, at least in the West. Don't get me started on Herodotus. That man wrote like some half-invented history. And his sources were like, my cousin told me that he knew a guy who dreamt once that in Egypt, if a cat dies, you have to sacrifice at least 10 people. Better write that down, so... And so he did. But he easily is the only and best source for the Greco-Persian Wars, so... There are no real other options, but 
please read him with a barrel of salt nearby. Where was I again? Ah, yes, yes, uh, Thucydides and the human nature and history. So Thucydides wrote in History of the Peloponnesian War, and I quote, The search for truth strains the patience of most people, who would rather believe the first thing that comes to hand. This history may not be the most delightful to hear, since there is no mythology in it. But those who want to look into the truth of what was done in the past, which, given the human condition, will reoccur in the future, either in the same fashion or nearly so, those readers will find this history valuable enough, as it was composed to be a lasting possession and not to be heard for a prize at the moment contest. End quote. Basically, Thucydides is telling us that human history does repeat itself, which I'm inclined to disagree with. It tends more to rhyme rather than repeating, since we will never have, for example, Hitler rising in power again. But there could be a situation in which many circumstances are similar, which could lead to a similar outcome, since we humans still think the same as 40,000 years ago. And we will probably think the same in another 40,000 years because we are still human. Unless we stop being human, in which case, yeah, it's another thing. And exactly that is the important lesson history teaches us, that so long we are human, we will have the same thinking patterns as the humans in the past, which means that we can fall for the same tricks and commit the same errors as them. So in a sense, if you don't learn your history, you're condemned to repeat it. And to prevent all of this, we should teach history in a better way, so that our children don't commit the same errors we did. Yeah, I guess I lied a bit. History is not useless after all. But the way it's taught in school, yeah, that's useless. So my lovely people, study history. And since you already made it to this point, why don't you subscribe to my channel? That way, next week, you can watch another history-related video. Like this one I made about Charles II and why he wasn't a bad king for Spain. Thank you. Bye.